But if it comes to getting ugly where somebody's gonna be trying to kill me, I'm gonna have to do something first or do something to prevent that from happening. Man, Craig Mack went to his grave mad at bad boy. Kim Porter says she dumped Diddy. I feel like in a statement to the TV show, the it is, I think somebody is trying to kill me. I'll be waking up paranoid. I'll be really scared. I'll just be paranoid. In the entertainment industry, it is usual thing for famous people to reveal conspiracy theories and expose the system. It seems that Jaguar Wright is right in his assertions about the reasons behind the demise of the members of Uptown Records. She says Sean Diddy Combs eliminates anyone threatening to reveal his sinister past. Since three of the five founding members are no longer with us, it is safe to say that Diddy is a ruthless man. The most intriguing similarity among them is that they were all penning exposes against the music executive. So, who are some of the celebrities who have mysteriously died or survived by a whisker after warning Diddy of his evil deeds? Let's find out. Al B. Sure, for one, has been working on a biopic about his life before falling into a coma. But has anything ever happened that you know when it comes to Diddy? Fans have their own doubts that Diddy would risk the lives of celebrities to hide his secrets. Is it possible? possible that Diddy is responsible for the deaths of other celebrities. Diddy truly killed them to prevent them from talking about his sinister doing. Right after that, Al had a meeting and I was going to meet up with him because we were in Vegas and then the next thing you know, because Al B. Shore just came out of his coma and I've been talking to Al and we've been texting back and forth and I'm just glad that he's alive to text. Oh, definitely. Definitely. You can see that Jaguar has once again revealed that Diddy was responsible for Kim Porter's death. Since they had agreed to meet up soon, her anger at the news was understandable. Kim's passing and Al's subsequent coma have changed everything irrevocably. Now that Al is alive, all she can do is be thankful that they can still communicate via text. Heavy D was found dead face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attacks. The number of casualties was too high for Jaguar's comfort. It's shocking to learn about the untimely deaths of so many well-known people. Andre Harrell, the man who started Uptown Records, passed away from a heart attack when he was 59 years old. Harold fought until his death to make lifestyle an important topic in the news. Plus, he added, Your goal is to bring real black America, just as it is, not watered down, to people everywhere through music, through films, through everything we do. Even if they couldn't believe it, fans were devastated by the news. Said one of them, What a loss. We lost a titan today. A true titan of black music. Rest in power, Mr. Harrell. Another added, A legend. A visionary. R.I.P. Andre Harrell. Many people believe that Diddy was behind Harold's sudden demise. In fact, several people tie Kim Porter's death to that of Harold. Yes, Porter is another victim of heartless Diddy. Rumor has it that Kim's longtime friend Andre Harold discovered the toxins in Porter's body and questioned Diddy directly about them. There is a widespread belief that these things were essential to proving Diddy's guilt. All right, well, we hold the cards, so let's investigate this. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a Kim Porter and Andre Harrell were the closest of friends both in and out of the workplace. Kim Porter, Andre's assistant at Uptown Records, worked there longer than anyone else. In addition, she was well on her way to becoming a famous and wealthy model. When she passed away from pneumonia, it tore her friends and family apart emotionally. But the first report said there were poisons found in her system. It was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. Andre, like many others, reportedly questioned the suddenness of his friend Kim's death and queried Diddy about the possible existence of chemicals in her body. Because of Andre's extensive tenure in the industry, his questioning was met with skepticism because of the likelihood that he was aware of what went down behind the scenes. It was also speculated that Diddy's anger stemmed from learning that Andre collaborated with Kim Porter on her tell-all book. Told me is that Diddy and Andre actually got into an argument back in 2000. It stands to reason that friends would encourage one another to put pen to paper while discussing common ground. It's unclear, though, if Diddy would have a problem with Kim publishing a book. 
Jaguar writes used the fact that most of the deceased Uptown colleagues had been the subject of tell-all books to expose Diddy's dirty past. We're all writing tell-all. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he Kim Porter was working on a book before she Jaguar has a loyal following that takes his every word as gospel. Did he killed everybody that worked for Uptown Records so he could be where he is now? Heavy D, Kim Porter, Andre Harrell, and Al B. Sure, but he survived. Like I said, all died from heart conditions, and Kim died from pneumonia, Jaguar lamented. All indications are that many have tried and failed to expose Diddy's true nature. And Diddy almost certainly played a role in Kim's sad demise. It's quite unlikely that Andre was oblivious to Diddy's shady operations, given how closely they worked together. It has also been said that Diddy and Andre had several workplace altercations about certain issues. The situation escalated to the point where Andre had to fire Diddy from his record label. So then Puff wouldn't really listen to anybody but me. So my full-time job became managing Puff, and I was doing... However, we are not yet at the end of the story. A group of Kim Porter's friends have released an anonymous statement about the events leading up to her death. A YouTuber who was reporting on Kim's story was contacted and asked to help disseminate the news. This is what she asked, if they are going to say that it was pneumonia and that she died peacefully in her sleep. Then why was there blood located on Kim's pillowcases and also a slight trail of blood on the bedroom door that led to the bathroom? It was reported that she died of natural causes on her death certificate, but we all know that's not true. Toluca Lake resident Kimberly Antoinette said Porter was discovered unresponsive in her home on the morning of November 15, 2018, per the Los Angeles County Medical Examiner Coroner. After Porter's passing, it was determined that he had lobar pneumonia. Many of Porter fans believe the autopsy reports may have been fake. Diddy killed Kim Porter and made sure nobody spoke a word about it. He even made sure the original autopsy was changed. Another one added, Diddy killed Kim Porter and nobody can make me believe differently. Then, to top it all off, a reliable source revealed information from Kim Porter's unfinished book. However, it does contain juicy details that may be detrimental to Diddy's career. Bosch being pregnant by Diddy, and of course, she had an AB. The beatings Kim took, pushing him down the steps in 2007 and him breaking his foot. Also, how she would use a strap on to please Diddy and how she would have stepped. Before breaking up with Kim, Diddy did an interview in which he revealed the following about his mental health. I'm wilder, I'm crazier. 50 Cent recently claimed that anyone who associates with Diddy is eventually consumed by him, suggesting that other singers had taken note of his crazy and reckless behavior. He knew exactly what I meant because he'd been standing next to something his entire career. Right. He stood next to Biggie, he put hot on him. I stand next to the fight if you want, right? You stand next to mate, mm -hmm. stand next to Jock. Look, Puffy might be the destination for any- But Al, Kim's ex-boyfriend, has a different take on the end of his first love. While Porter was running from something or someone before her death, Sher claimed in a now-deleted Instagram caption that he told her to call the FBI. He didn't say specifically that she was running a marathon until much later. You're not the first person to hear that Diddy bought Kim Porter a 24 karat gold casket a month before she passed away. Diddy allegedly dated several people in the music business, including Clive Davis. His behavior after the deaths of Kim Porter and Andre Harrell was predictable. He sang a song dedicated to his putative peers in the music industry. A heartfelt video with the caption, on the anniversary of Kim's death, he posted to Instagram, I miss you so much, so much every time I get sad, I look at this video and it brings a smile to my face. I thank God for the precious time he allowed us to have with you. I wish you were here with us right now, and this was all a dream. I will never give up on that wish. Never. Love you forever, Kimberly Antoinette Goodwin Porter. However, those in the know have exposed Diddy's evil ways. Gene Deal claimed that Diddy's sorrow at Kim's death was an act designed to gain sympathy from the public. You gotta look at the dude actions, man. In addition, it seems inevitable that a wrongful death suit will be filed against Diddy. Since they have always doubted the official cause of death being pneumonia, Kim's family is reportedly seeking legal counsel in order to construct a strong case against Diddy. The same reliable source also disclosed that Diddy's other victim Usher joined the family in filing the complaint. The public, however, worries that disclosing such private information could harm the family's safety. Why publicize this obviously private information? Why not know it? Decide that right now might not be the time to expose this. It may jeopardize the people that are going behind Diddy's back to make sure something they have solid concrete evidence and trying to protect themselves at the same time. 
given Diddy's past actions, it's obvious that this is a very serious matter that should be handled wisely and cautiously. That person was wrong for even leaking that private info, one concerned fan lamented. Keep in mind what Kim Porter revealed in an Essence interview following her breakup. As black women, we sacrifice, we stand by our man, through thick and thin, through whatever. But if you feel like, maybe I am getting the short end of the stick, that's when a change has to take place. When the late actress became pregnant and realized how hazardous her surroundings were, she determined to do all in her power to completely eradicate the problem. I laid low and did what women do. I did my background work, collected information about the other woman. It's not an original script. He's not the first man who's cheated. He's not the first man who's had a baby outside of his relationship. He's not the originator of this. But at this point in my life, I have girls now. It's a different program. Porter is not the last of Diddy's long list of victims. Apart from Andre Harrell, Porter, and the lucky escape of Albie, Craig Mack is another person Diddy is accused of taking out. Because Craig wanted his money for his music. So, Puff said, yo, I ain't fucking with that kid no more. Craig Mack was once widely considered the next big thing in the rap industry. After his first album, he began winning accolades and breaking records left and right. However, the good times only lasted for a very brief period. Despite all the commotion, Craig departed the profession as quickly as he had entered it. In fact, he was on the verge of murder throughout his tenure in the profession. The bombshell revelation that Craig planned to kill Diddy comes from his last interview, which was not made public. But why did he go to such lengths, and what made him stop? Over the course of a few years, Craig Mack experienced the industry's peaks and valleys in music. He appeared, expanded to gigantic proportions, and was promptly forgotten. But how did everything come to pass? And how fast? As it turns out, one man was to blame for everything. It was none other than Diddy, the notorious record producer. Craig was eager to kill Diddy since he made and then destroyed his career. Sorry, I'm sorry. I was thinking about trying to do this to somebody because it was really in my heart to kill him. You know what I'm saying? Diddy did Craig wrong over and over again. He continually puts Craig through the ringer by interfering with his rap career and stealing his money. Craig was once requested to record at the studio by Diddy, who subsequently refused to pay him. Somebody that wanted to do another album with me. So I said, cool, I, go, I gave him my price, and the price was... Diddy scammed Craig out of two-thirds of the money he was owed, despite the fact that they had already agreed on a price and terms for payment. But Craig, being a benevolent and naive soul, agreed to the terms. However, Diddy is the one person in the business who should never be trusted. If he can help it, the man will take all of your money. Craig saw through it all and eventually quit working for Diddy. You give me the money as we go. You know what I'm saying? I'll take a third again. I take a third again when we finish the actual recording of the album. But the mogul is a spoiled brat who believes everyone owes him something, regardless of whether or not he pays them. Because of this, he went ahead and plotted an attack on Craig. Diddy is a dangerous man with an unhealthy fascination with criminal organizations like the Mafia. Craig's admission that Diddy had tried to blackmail him into doing free labor for him was not unexpected. Craig, who was typically calm and easygoing, was finally driven to his breaking point by Diddy's relentless harassment. He was so distraught by the repeated threats that he considered taking drastic action. I had a gun. If Diddy continued to threaten Craig, he was going to kill him. After all, Craig's only hope now was to stay alive. He had to stick up for himself or Diddy would destroy his life. But if it comes to getting ugly where somebody's going to be trying to kill me, I'm going to have to do something first or do something first. What followed, however, startled Craig Mack just as much as it should shock you. Craig sat there planning a murder, but the Lord had other ideas. In a remarkable turn of events, gospel music played on the radio and Craig's life was forever altered. In an instant, his mind was cleared of any murderous intent and he was certain that God would never want him to take such a sinful action. Craig sobbed as he realized the terrible error of his ways. It appears that God has given Diddy a second opportunity. Because of what happened, Craig decided he no longer wanted anything to do with the Hollywood scene. After going missing for six years, he re-emerged with a cult. It appears that he had a genuine encounter with the Divine on the night he meant to kill Diddy. Craig's brief but memorable career in music will be remembered even though he never returned to the industry. He was instrumental in the rise of Diddy and the massive bad boy label, but his connection with Diddy was short-lived. On realizing Craig wanted to make a documentary about his past, Diddy did his thing and the next thing we know is that Craig was gone. Gone forever and never to be heard of again. 
even fans read Malice and how all these events played out. One supporter claimed that Diddy damages the careers of the musicians he signs. All of them meet terrible deaths, and Diddy is the only one who benefits. He pens, I've never really taken Diddy's black excellence thing seriously. All the artists signed to him either had untimely deaths or just didn't become as huge as they could be. Loon, Crate Mac, Day 26, Mace, Danity Kane, etc. Some people believe that it is acceptable to hate Diddy completely. He put Craig through so much hell, it's no wonder he wanted to kill him. As one Twitter user mentioned, I can understand why people feel some type of way about Puff Daddy. He hasn't particularly helped matters. Locks and Mace had to fight their way out of the contract. Craig Mac hated Diddy till death. Rob doesn't speak well of him. Even his biggest prodigy yet, Notorious B.I.G., was reportedly taken out by Diddy. And I hope you all haven't forgotten about Tupac Shakur. Those are arguably two of the greatest rappers of all time taken out by one single, mean, ruthless, and relentless guy. Using one word, how would you describe Diddy? Let us know in the comments section below. And that's it from us today. Until next time, bye!